Well, first I want to thank the organizers for including me in this, into this ongoing discussion. Uh, the frame of reference of the following is an understanding uh, of what we may call eco-technical dimension. Uh, eco referring on the one hand to the ecological issue uh, as a matter of the relationship between human kind and uh, the nature. The second, time of, uh, second dimension of this eco-technical uh, issue is the economic issue, um, as it is about the, the mode of production, including the accumulation regime. The accumulation regime, uh, I do not want to understand simply in a, in, with its reference to the capitalist uh, system, of accumulation, but uh, in more in, in general terms, widening, widening it to the uh, issue of wealth, the accumulation of wealth, the accumulation of different dimensions of wealth, which is not just monetary wealth, it is time wealth, it's soci sociability, uh, it's, it's cohesion, societal cohesion, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's not the strictly the, the, the reference to the um, French school of regulation, but using this still as a framework. So I move on uh, looking at, at the mode of regulation, uh, which is the institution, the juridical system, uh, including the, the constitution as, as a constitutioning, constitutionalizing process. Uh, so it's not just the written constitution, but it's understood as a process, uh, as unfortunately not often done in uh, legal theory. And of course, it's re referring as well to the wide uh, array of, of norms, of conflicts about norms and redefining norms. Um, now, in the living region, which is the third point of reference, um, these norms are actually, and, and these conflicts are actually uh, lived and, and permanently redefined in conflicts, in compromises, uh, in reorganization of the con this, this constitutional uh, process. Um, it is a, as, as well a matter of of uh, of. of establishing this constitutional uh, process and of its uh, maintenance and the permanent reproduction of social and societal processes. Another dimension it's, uh, is the, the, the mode of individual uh, realization. Uh, how people actually, as individuals, uh, define their roles within this complex system uh, how they, how, how, what what kind of take they have on these processes, and where they position themselves. Uh, it is about living conditions, uh, but it is as well about what to do, how actually to live this. We can have various uh, theoretical uh, references, uh, including the uh, issue of. Uh, of, of Gramsci, of Foucault, always defining, redefining power, uh, and of Paulo Freire, for instance. Just looking at the current situation, uh, I think what we have to think about, it's, it's the Chaboté, it's an, a, a system, the capitalist system, uh, is a system that, is, that, that lost uh, to a large extent uh, it's, it's reality, if we want. Um, we, we have this one image, one capitalism, uh, and in its presentation it's usually presented as a, 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 a prosperous system. Now, we all know that this is not the case, and of course there is the, the challenge to realize as well that we have a different capitalisms. This capitalist world system, it does exist, but at the same time it only exists because there are different types of capitalism. Uh, 
then we have within capitalism, um, we, we have an inner differentiation. Mm. So it is not the one wealthy system, the one poor system, but exactly as we know, um, it, it is a system of conflicts, of permanent conflicts and of um, increasing conflicts, at least uh, temporarily increasing uh, conflicts. Um, now, one question today is, uh, if we look at, at the crisis, not least at the crisis uh, and, and the discussion afterwards, uh, even in the left, in, within progressive groups, there was always this fear of excess. And the, the mention it's just an excessive system and we do not uh, really have to change the system, but we have to control it. We have to keep the excess uh, under, under control. Of course, we do have. We have to establish certain mechanisms of regulation, of, of, uh, of, of control. But the question is, does this really change anything? Um, now, coming from here to the major challenges uh, on a general level, we may refer to exactly the, the, the integration of these different mechanisms and the effort, the attempts to build up a kind of, of a cohesive system um, of the eco-technical, technological uh, dimension of the regulation and of the different perspective of uh, lives, no, of, of life. It is, in a, it, it stands in a tension. On the one hand, having the reference to this system as it exists today with all the inequalities and contradictions. And there is, of course, something of... Um, maintaining humankind. Mm, even if we have a short-term orientation, a profit orientation, uh, there, there is this general issue of it is, even if it is a war, it is not a war to extinguish humankind. Uh, this, this general issue had been um, dealt with in the, the Keynesian beverage and, uh, perspective. Uh, it had been translated into five, uh, five major points. It was uh, want, it was about disease, ignorance, squalor, and idleness. These had been the, the important the core issues um, that reflected both the general issue of maintaining humankind, the humankind and its application to the specific uh, system as it is usually um, captured by the, the term Fordism. I would move on and say uh, post-Fordism is at the end very much in the same uh, direction and uh, did not really change fundamentally uh, this issue. The basis, if we look at the um, socio-economic dimension, is um, very much about mass production. It's, it is about a competitive system. It is about uh, growth. And it is about uh, some kind of national sovereignty. And as I said, this, this issue of um, the, the, the critique of the current crisis as a crisis of excess is trying to exactly address these points. It is about state intervention, limited state intervention, but state uh, um, intervention in order to limit this excess. It is about uh, competition and limiting and steering uh, competition uh, to avoid excessive social and societal threats. It is about re-establishing mass production, uh, re-establishing growth, and it is about uh, this is very important as well in, in the current debate uh, on, on the strengthening and re-strengthening, re-establishment of uh, sovereignties. Uh, we have it on the national level, of course, uh, against the regional um, uh, 
concentration, like the European Union or others, but it is as well re uh, uh, establishing these such units um, as, uh, as actors, as agencies on the global scale. Uh, we find this, for instance, in connection with the BRICS and the, the MINS. Um, some basic ideas of, of governance are introduced and subsidiarity is discussed. Um, it is as well the, the, this reference to um, real, uh, real economy. We have to, to separate fi and, and control finance industry to make it possible to, for, for real economy to reestablish itself. And it is about uh, redistribution of this excessive wealth. So, as said, all this has to be seen in, uh, in the light of these uh, five issues, one disease, ignorance, squalor, and idleness. Um, what is neglected in all these debates um, is that we are dealing with what, what is called excess, with a systematic consequence of this mode of production. Um, t t it, 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 it is a requirement, actually. Uh, we, we can refer to, to Parsons in sociology, the, uh, the AGIL scheme, and we can as well uh, refer to the, to the perspective of, of the accumulation regime as the permanent need to reproduce itself and to um, undermine with this production, with this reproduction, its own conditions. It is um, as well a perspective where actually the, the defense of this system uh, is given as well by, by John Mann Keynes, uh, who in, in his famous uh, essays um, in Pers Persuasion, the, the letters to his grandchildren, um, says, I just quote, for many ages to come, the old Adam will be so strong in us that everybody will need to do some work if he is to be cont contented. Uh, we shall do more things for ourselves than is usual with the rich to, uh, today, only to, too glad to have a small duties and tasks and routines. But beyond this, we shall endeavor to spread the bread thin of the butter, uh, on the butter to make what work uh, there is still to be done to be as widely shared as possible. Three hour shifts or a 15 hour week may put off the problem of a, of, uh, for a great while. For three hours a day is quite enough to satisfy the old Adam in most of us. But at the same time, there is a long way, as he, say, uh, as he said, uh, to, to go there to achieve this. Uh, this was actually uh, from, from a different, it, it was from another essay, uh, the, the Future, the title is The Future. Uh, in a di dialectical perspective, we are dealing with a social and societal development. Uh, looking at capitalism, capitalism as a formation, it is flexible and it is flexibly adapting to the emerging conditions and potentialities. Um, but in doing so, and this is more the, 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 the route I want to propose here, in doing so, without neglecting this adaptability, without neglecting the aggressiveness of, of this adaptation, uh, we see, I have to say as well that uh, this adaptation undermines uh, the validity of its own goals, uh, one of the main challenges is emerging from the fact that we are dealing with a process of socialization. What we see is individualization. What we see is the individualization of, uh, of, of profit, of wealth, of affluence. But at the same time, if we look in an overall societal perspective uh, at the development, we are facing a process of socialization. And I think it is fair enough to say it is happening uh, on both levels. 
namely really in terms of the production and the accumulation regime um, as well in the mode of regulation but as well on the level of uh, political process of how people deal with it. Um, as said, this is against the odds. It stands seemingly against what what we uh, what we see in terms of people getting isolating uh, isolated, using computers, not communicating with each other, um, not participating in, in political processes, and so on. Uh, what can we say about the the given potentials? In this, in, in this perspective. How can we think about uh, the, the current situation uh, as a, a constellation that really allows us to go further and that uh, shows us the potentials that are there? Uh, again, I want to link it to what I said to the five items. Uh, what we have as tensions is First, overproduction of goods. We, we produce, we produce and produce. It is an overproduction and uh, accumulating goods as such, but as well the quality of many goods is turning into beds. Uh, something we do not need, something that actually takes our attention from real life, that distracts from solving problems, and it's, it's just about gadgets. Uh, second, societal abundance. Uh, as said, we are looking at the, the real situation as it is now, as a development of, of uh, individuals generating and, and accumulating wealth. At the same time, we should not forget that at the end, this is a societal abundance uh, in terms of the potentials that are there, in terms of the potentials that can be used and have to be used. Uh, third point then is the abundance of knowledge. Uh, usually we, we reduce it, uh, in, in, especially in education, we complain about it and we, we rightly complain about uh, about it, it's it's the the reduction of knowledge on, on 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 skills. But I think there is much more to it. If we are honest, we have a, an abundance of wealth, as well on an individual level. This is where we have all these potentials that people engage uh, themselves outside of the actual system. Uh, so we have this uh, this this conflict. Um, that there is an, and if, if we want to refer to, to Lockwood Habermas and this, uh, we have a, a kind of anti colonial movement outside of the colonial system. We uh, submit ourselves to, to, to the processes of employment, of labor, we submit our, uh, ourselves to uh, not being political, politically active in the traditional understanding. But at the same time, there is an increasing uh, activities in, in political terms as well, in civil society, the, all, all the civic movements. It is about voluntary work and so on and so forth. It is about uh, cultural activities um, that are, I guess, more increasing than, than decreasing in an overall perspective. Uh, Part of this, what I called anti-colonialism outside of the colonialist system, is that uh, problems, that challenges are um, individualized. They are highly individualized. They, it, it is extremely difficult really to see, to make out the so uh, social and societal dimension. Nevertheless, the outcome uh, the consequence is very much the transposition in social threats. It's what, what is known, what, what Durkheim was talking about, uh, anomia. Uh, it is individual health problems, uh, it is in, uh, retreat disactivities, um, and as well, in, in some cases, violent protest. The 
traditional government system is apparently unable to deal with the situation and it is unable uh, trying to find a way out uh, against its own inability by establishing what is called governance. Uh, of course, as it still links to the old idea of government, as it still links to re-establishing and maintaining the, the old system um, of, of this uh, mode of production, uh, these, these systems of governments fail. They are limited. There are some tiny good uh, progressive matters with it. There are some small doors opening for... for um, for, for gaining influence of, uh, by, by movement outside of the system, but overall uh, it's just more or less a fake. Uh, many things could be and should be said on this, but uh, the, the, the problem is really uh, that all this is based or is, is linked to this eco-technical development, uh, in the first sense, ecologically uh, and technologically uh, hugely problematic constellations, um, which then are in, in several cases um, assessed in, in, in strange ways um, that they are reduced to this side, reduced just we have to, uh, to solve the ecological problem, we have to solve the techno uh, technological problem, or we have to make use of the potential, potential, potentialities there. Um, zero marginality, zero marginality cost, um, the, the, these are issues there. What we usually do not discuss is the old economic dimension, uh, of the profit, the, the tendency of the profit, role, uh, profit rate to fall. Um, we, we have to see the dangers, and especially if we look at the profit, the, the tendency of the profit rate to fall, uh, this is exactly this, this mechanism that also leads to this huge, extreme concentration and centralization of capital. Um, if, if you look a little bit into to what it really means in monetary terms, in, in terms of inequality, uh, it, it, it's just frightening. It's not even frightening. It's, uh, it, it looks like something that, that is not real, that cannot be uh, with this extreme uh, a real process. Without denying these dangers, without denying these tensions, just uh, I wanted to look at the potentials that are given in this constellation. Um, the, the, the fact that there are positive forces as well as societal political forces at play, um, and that we have to think not only about the, the old dangers, but as well as new dangers that are emerging uh, from, from this um, uh, new constellation. I want to start with a letter um, that this process develops a certain dynamic in its own terms, and this dynamic is very much about the uh, individualization, but it is as well uh, very much about, with this, in, in hand in hand with this, about the subjectivation. Uh, we do not have rights and law anymore in the broad, in the traditional understanding, but this is as well reduced on this uh, new system, new requirement, and new framework uh, of individual, seemingly individual actors that are linked to technology, that are uh, more following the technological requirements than being able to control them. Um, the entertaining, more or less entertaining dimension of this debate can be seen when it comes to artificial intelligence. Um, that uh, ex machina 
uh, we, we develop a system that actually um, ex extinguishes our ex uh, existence, if, if you ever looked, watched this, this film. Um, now, back to the, to the analytical side um, and, and looking at the potential, potentialities, uh, briefly looking at Keynesianism and Babriogenism as the, the framing system. I said accumulation regime. Uh, we have technically, uh, we found there, technically enabled mass production. And we found a price setting mechanism uh, that allowed mass consumption. They have to be seen together. Mass production, mass consumption, very much uh, oriented to, to the domestic markets. In looking at the, the mode of regulation, uh, we find there uh, the nation state, full employment and social insurance, um, organized different from nation to state to nation state, uh, but, but this was an overall framework. And uh, it was as well a mode of life that allowed uh, to distribute work in a way that uh, made it possible as well uh, that people have had time for consumption. Looking at the living regime, um, it was a matter of pushing towards domestic consumption. And it's domestic and consumption, it's this consumerism, uh, which is not a new thing. I remember in the, in the 50s it was discussed um, the, 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 the loans uh, of private households increasing uh, and an over-indebtedness there. It's, it's only forgetten, for, forgotten that we, we think, oh, this is a very new uh, thing on, and led to the crisis. No, uh, there had been other mechanisms earlier that, that could re-establish this, this system and stabilize it. Um, but at the same time, it was hugely conflictual. Political changes took place. Uh, and of course, all this had to be kind of politically maintained against the uh, socialist competitor, which did exist and which uh, required to, uh, to make um, uh, to, to establish mechanisms of, of redistribution and so on. Now, looking at the mode of life, uh, it is again with this consumerism also uh, pushing towards what we, what we can say a relatively luxurious individualism. Um, this was exactly what we found in the 50s and the 60s and which had been criticized by the left. Uh, this, this consumerism um, looking at, at, at uh, or, or availing of loans to make it post possible um, if you want just to show off. There was no real life um, and this was then the, the seedbed for, for all the discussions um, Adorno, the Frankfurt School uh, if, if you read today the minimum mor moralia from uh, Adorno it's, it, it reads many of these things read like, like being written today and of course, it was the attractivity as well, especially here of Cuba, of the movement of the Latin American liberation movements, um, as said, especially here, and um, the, the, the hope that something would uh, develop from here. Uh, this system based or linked on the one hand, to the uh, tendency of the profit rate to fall, meant at the same time that we find uh, the increasing the, the increase of profits. Profits uh, increased enormously. <coughs> Sorry, increased enormously, and at the same time, uh, have been going hand in hand. Have been the foundation for a process of concentration and centralization of capital. 
in consequence, the, the financialization, even if at, at a much later uh, state, uh, stage really being prevalent and, and really being dominant, um, and what I would call the, the servicialization, uh, meaning the increasing, uh, the, the, the growth of areas that had been linked to services. The, the production as such, as well due to technological developments, uh, did not play the role as it uh, did earlier. Uh, I, I cannot go into details, really, of the entire technological development. Uh, I, I cannot at all look at the critique of the Rostovian model of, of development and the, the Kondratiev-Schumpeter discussion of the long waves, but at least um, we, we have to, to in, in a nutshell, to see that this development of the technical and organ, um, organic composition of capital um, had been leading and is leading to something that we may call uh, excess, uh, excess uh, uh, um, economy. It is about accessing, it's about distribution uh, away from uh, the, the, the production be, being the core, the, being the core of the, all, uh, of, of the every day's process, but um, the, the excess accessibility is increasingly important and it is increasingly as well, at least seemingly, creating value. Uh, we, we definitely have to, to do more work in this uh, area. Uh, what it means when we say it's, it's uh, seemingly uh, creating profit in this area, in these areas of uh, new technologies and, and uh, this development. Um, there is this saying that that the old system was based on on energy as driving force. Um, of course, industrialization and with the steam engine, um, but as well the electrification later, but that we have now a development that is uh, based on, on data and the related information technology as an engine of process. Um, I briefly mentioned artificial intelligence, uh, which plays increasingly a role. At the same time, we should never forget that at this stage, at least, it is not disconnected from, from uh, its, its human existence. It is just used, and it is used for a certain uh, profitable system. And then we have this discussion on, on the prosumers. Uh, I think this is important, uh, looking at the development there, um, that this, this presumption, uh, production and consumption falls together, that we have a tendency there um, that actually, uh, in economic terms, results in a, a kind of re-merger or, or a reshuffling of this process, uh, of, of this um, relationship between C and V, uh, constant and variable capital. Uh, machines, technical equipments, all this plays a huge role, of course, but at the same time, it is coming to socialization, it is in, in many instances there, and the actual production, um, the, the production of ideas, the production of excess. Uh, accessibility uh, is not linked to um, linked absolutely to, to the individual control of the means of production. The, the actual means of production uh, needed are kind of, of uh, limited. Um, it's linked to another dimension of this entire economic dimension, uh, a question namely 
the, the reunification, if you want, uh, of use value and exchange value. Uh, there, there is a, a shift taking place. We should not overestimate it. We should not idealize it. Uh, but at the same time, there are some movements going on um, that play a role and that have to be considered. It is in this sense as well, uh, if, if we want to use this term, an, an uno actu e uh, economy uh, where production, consumption, uh, use value, using things and exchanging things uh, are taking place. Uh, in in this uh, common in, in this one process, mm. we we I don't want to, to go into details there, but but the economic uh, capacities uh, in this area is just enormous, and um, if, if we look at the figures, uh, it is sometimes difficult actually to to understand really, to grasp what, what is going on there. Um, this means as well um, that, that we, we have to face this, this contradiction uh, of individualization, or highlighted here again, the individualization and socialization uh, and the, the, the societal wealth and abundance standing against the, the other perspectives. Uh, using the words of uh, referring to Amartya Sen, um, it is, uh, we, we have to acknowledge the fact that opportunity freedom cannot be sensibly judged merely in terms of possession of commodities, but must take note of the opportunity of doing things and achieving results one has reason to value. So this is the tension we are facing, and this is, I think, a tension that is very important um, as well in, in terms of, um, of, of the, what, what I called the abundance of knowledge. People are not, not anymore simply, leaving consumerism aside, are not simply happy with consuming more and more and more. Um, the data availability is enormous and it is a process where we cannot really, what, what, what we cannot really imagine. Um, I, I read recently, uh, I don't have the figures here in front of me, uh, that driving a car, uh, a high-end car for one hour produces, I think, about 25 gigabytes um, of data. These data are used, and they are used for profit. At the same time, we should not underestimate that they can be used in a different way, that they can be used in a way of uh, being profitable as increasing societal wealth, as increasing the abilities, capabilities of, uh, of human beings on a social scale. Uh, it is, of course, about distribution and redistribution, but it is about more than this. It is about establishing a, a completely different uh, system. Looking at capitalism today, I want to propose um, five, uh, five policies, five politics linked to the five issues uh, mentioned before, and I, I turn them around, start with idleness. Um, idleness had been considered as a matter of this employment-oriented, employment-based system, uh, which was about em being employed for producing a income for the individual, but as well producing profit for individuals, meaning for the entrepreneur. We can uh, linked to Frigga Haug and her, her, what, what she calls four-in-one perspective. Um, others worked on this as well, including myself uh, in, as, as a matter of looking at things as a matter of social quality. Uh, four-in-one perspective uh, systematically 
um, works towards a, a conjunction of four areas of human practice, namely employment, productive work, cultural development and politics of belong. All this takes place already in different forms. All this is dominated and colonialized by the orientation of employment. Uh, but with reproductive or cultural development politics of be from below, uh, we, we find mechanisms that are needed, that are relevant for the reproduction of the system itself, in one way or another. And it is not a matter of professionals, of commodi further commodification, but here we find huge potentials as well of decommodification. Uh, de um, the issue of squalor, social investment, is a, a, a frequently used concept um, when it comes to, to political debates. We should think in this perspective not just as a met, uh, not just uh, about employment policy, social investment in favor of employment, but think about it in a wider uh, understanding. Ignorance, uh, ignorance is simply to be counted, counteracted by a strategy of um, employment or education training. Education ou formation. Uh, this had been especially by Paul Poincaré discussed um, in a piece on une sécurité d'emploi ou de formation. Um, and it had been actually uh, taken up by uh, parts of the, uh, the, the social, even social democratic socialist movement in, in France. Uh, disease, and here we see especially that all this, uh, this, this pushes towards a, a new anthropomic uh, orientation. Uh, disease is as well, at least, a matter of a lack of uh, work, what, what is called work-life balance. It is uh, the individualization of health issues um, where we have to look at a new, I would not, I, I hesitate to say this, this work-life balance, a new form of organizing work that we have to look at socialized health care, free access, and free access um, as a prophylactic system, as we find it here in Cuba. And it is as well the, if you want, education towards responsibility, uh, dealing in a responsible way with, with one's own and other selves. Want had been mentioned as the first point uh, in the original concept, but I want to, to use it as, as the last point here, perhaps as the last point simply to make clear it is here where we, we simply have to take a radical measure of uh, redistribution. And redistribution in the understanding of uh, a new perspective um, that is taking place in production. <coughs> Sorry. Second point, looking at uh, Cuba, looking at other countries where we find, um, let's say, non-capitalist movements, socialist movements, um, but especially as Cuba as it is a, a socialist country. Uh, preliminary, uh, 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 for upfront note, um, Cuba. Uh, is not a capitalist uh, system, and never and and um, it, it, it ne nevertheless we have to consider um, that it is uh, that there, there, there are capitalist elements uh, in this system. They they always have been uh, um, had been relevant, as we see not least. Uh, by the embargo and, and the negative, the hugely negative and massively negative um, effects from there. Um, 
Another point that is relevant uh, here as well, uh, the, the second dimension, it is characterized by the pervasiveness of traditional societal structures. The uh, multi-ethnical society in many countries, other countries as well, uh, pronouncedly since uh, some time, characterized by the emphasis of indigenous rights and subsequently by specific takes on social and environmental issues. It is important, not least because this um, is, is an issue of, of a different anthropomorphic uh, way of thinking um, that opens way, open ways uh, to, to question the old structures, to question the old uh, reference systems of, of nation states and the, the traditional understanding of uh, political democracy and so on. Um, the contradictions are, uh, have, have to be seen here. I mentioned earlier this shift, the, the, um, the, the recomposition of capital from C to V, from constant and variable capital. Um, this, this move towards favoring variable capital. It takes place in different, uh, uh, different ways. Um, but I think it is important, not least because it uh, is as well a matter of a shift to, towards uh, non-tradable goods. If we look at the overall economic patterns, we find in many, many countries a decrease of the meaning of tradable goods, a decrease on the dependency of countries from export. Um, as I said, it's the overall picture, and it is obvious that not everybody, not every country, not every nation state can simply go on living on, um, on exports and depending on, uh, on others. Uh, there is always one loser and there is no win-win situation, even if David Ricardo suggested this. Um, the means of, con uh, of, of production in this wider sense, in there, there we have to, to look at the double structure, or we have to, to acknowledge this double structure. Um, the means of production um, are to, to, to a large to increasing um, extent means of dissemination. I mentioned this uh, excess economy, uh, which is very important, as well leading us actually uh, to a new consideration of what is um, what what is produced in in qualitative terms. What what is relevant. Uh, when it comes to, to production. Um, the, the one issue is, is simply, simply, as I said, distri uh, redistribution uh, and, and uh, the appropriation of the means of, of uh, production. Um, but there are other issues, and, and of course these, these are issues on a global scale and, and they are different, difficult to, to handle. Uh, as we do not have any kind of, of global government or governance system. Mm, the, the United Nations is simply too, too weak. Uh, World Bank and IMF, of course, have different, uh, different issues on the agenda. Uh, nevertheless, there are here and now, I think, uh, important points, and, and we discussed some of them, and we will discuss hopefully further in the debate, uh, some of, the, of, of these issues. Here and now it is about localization of, of production, uh, not in the, in the old understanding, for instance, of Maoism um, as an as autarkic system uh, with, with low production. We need industrial production, this is uh, without doubt, but at the same time we have to look at the local potential potentialities and we have to look there as well at uh, cooperatives that play a huge role here uh, in the country. Um, another issue is we have to look 
not for comparative advantages, but for, for local advantages. We have to look at, at defining and redefining local needs as well, um, which can easily be defined in many cases with the means of uh, information technology and um, which, which open up a, a new potential for new uh, value generation. And I, I was hesitating a little bit at first, I wanted to say for employment, but it is not only about employment. Um, now, what we find already here uh, is the orientation on tourism. Of course, it needs to be uh, sustainable tourism. It is about this, this richness, this wealth of culture, um, and it is about the development of, of education. Um, culture, education, mm, using consciously using information technology and, and these advances, uh, nevertheless have this, this uh, new dimension to it, not only by these means, but in terms of uh, redefining what actually identity is and, and how people define themselves. So from here I can go back to the beginning and say it is about eco-technology, uh, eco as a matter of a new thinking. And we are only at the beginning of this, at a new thinking uh, of this anthropogenic system of redefining our relationship to nature, redefining our, uh, um, our relationship to others. Chat Beauté. I said this, this, uh, this, this fairy tale dealing with... Um, with a society that is not real. Uh, we, we come there and we have to see this as a, a huge split that is econ economically founded, uh, but that allows society today uh, to apparently uh, be in good shape, to be wealthy and to solve and even to address problems. Chapeauté means um, we have to refer actually to another fairy tale, namely the, the, the new clothes of the emperor. At the end, he was naked. At the end, uh, we have these wealthy systems still and increasingly only being possible, only being based in systems of competition, in uh, systems of uh, exclusion. If we balance this, if we balance this internationally and if we balance it nationally, we have at least the potential uh, to overcome uh, the, the, the flaws and to make use of the potential, potentialities uh, as we have them. We should not overestimate them, but we should not uh, leave them out of sight and say a little bit control uh, will do good and will uh, secure development in the future. Especially countries like Cuba, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, but as well countries like um, in, in, in the European Union, uh, as well a country like China, uh, they, they have the potential they, they, they don't start from zero, but at least they, they start considering um, in new ways uh, what the way to the future can be. So, thank you very much.